thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, uh, for granting me this debate and allowing me to highlight an issue which has been prominent in my own constituency and I know in the constituencies of many other honourable members who have come along this evening. Uh, drownings are sadly all too common, and we hear today of um, a body being recovered in London and, and recently in the Spears Wharf area in the Honourable Member for Glasgow uh, North East constituency. And our heart goes out to all the families who have lost uh, loved ones uh, to drowning. And we, I highlight as well the Royal Life Saving Society's summer water safety campaign with many people with the scorching temperatures outside being tempted to go into the water. Um, but not realising the risks that that um, involves also. And we need to all look out for one another in these circumstances and to make sure, as much as we can do, that those messages do get shared to all of our constituents, wherever we have open water in our constituencies or rivers or, or even large ponds, that people understand the risks that they are taking when they, when they do so. Concerns have been raised for some time in Glasgow regarding damage to life belts and life ropes, particularly but not exclusively on the banks of the River Clyde, which runs through my constituency. Life-saving equipment is being removed, damaged and otherwise tampered with on a regular basis. In response, Glasgow City Council's Water Safety Working Group have launched a campaign, Taking a Life Belt is Taking a Life. Uh, but only after a week after the launch um, of signs affixed to um, the life belt posts in the city, the Evening Times reported that some of these signs themselves had then been vandalised. Andy Waddle, the chairman of Glasgow uh, Water Safety Working Group, said people who vandalise the life belts along the Clyde need to be fully aware of the potentially lethal consequences of their actions. Really good that anyone would seek to destroy a safety message intended to prote protect lives is truly mind-boggling. I'll give way to the honourable gentleman. Can I congratulate the honourable lady for Glasgow Settle bringing this forward? I did speak to her today about it, and I just want to uh, make her aware of a similar circumstance in my constituency. The member may not be aware that the life belts in Kerry Harbour and my constituency of Strangford have been tampered with on a number of occasions. Does she agree with me that further steps have to be taken to ensure that safety equipment like this is not tampered with, since the unavailability of life belts could lead to death and the prospect that fines are not enough and that indeed fines and penalties for this behaviour should be legally binding, which maybe the Minister can respond to, and of such levity that people will think twice before destroying life belts that could end up seeing someone die who just did not have to. I absolutely agree with the point that he makes, and I sympathise to, the, to those being affected in his constituency by this as well. It is quite a widespread um, occurrence and seems to be happening yeah. uh, right across uh, these islands, and we need to do more about that. Um, with the honourable member, uh, I, I, I thank and congratulate my honourable friend for having secured this very important debate on water safety, since many of us feel very, very strongly about it. In my own Slough constituency, there have been fatalities in the Jubilee River, an issue that I have raised with the Prime Minister, no less, during the Prime Minister's questions. And in this regard, uh, I want to commend Slough Borough Council, who, working with their partners, the Environment Agency, uh, the um, Thames Valley Police and Royal uh, Berkshire Fire and Rescue, have installed safety signage warning people about the dangers of swimming in the river given the strong un undercurrents and the effects of cold water shock even during these summer months. But would my uh, honourable friend agree that while life-saving equipment should not be tampered with, the government has simply been too slow to implement an effective and sufficient water safety education programme? I would agree with that, and I think there's, there's a lot more to be said for, for coordination of action and also making sure that more happens, um, that um, there's not a piecemeal approach to water safety um, around uh, the UK. I will, of course. I, I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady for raising today's debate. Tragically, over Easter, we lost five people in York's rivers, and we continue to be one of the highest levels of river deaths in the country in York. On Saturday, I had the privilege of going out with York Rescue Boat, a voluntary organisation which does tremendous work um, in maintaining river safety and the fire and rescue service. Their plea was for some specific funding for training, equipment and facilities, because they too have faced um, issues with equipment being tampered with. Does she agree that we should have specific funding for river safety? Yeah. I sympathise with the, uh, the families of those who have lost loved ones in, in the York area. That sounds absolutely awful, the circumstances um, which she describes. And I would agree that there needs to be more done on funding uh, for these organisations, because it feels very much to me as if a lot of this is left up to charity and to the goodwill of local organisations or councils, rather than having a specific pot of funding. 
Incidents of drowning are unfortunately decreasing in Scotland, and Water Safety Scotland noted that there were 78 water-related fatalities in Scotland in 2018, down from over 100 in 2013. But this does not mean that we should be complacent, and we need to continue to ensure that people do not lose their lives in the water. And I note also that the Scottish Government have designated 2020 the year of coasts and waters, and that seems like a good, as good an opportunity as any to discuss some of the, the the issues around water safety, as well as uh, extolling the positive um, virtues of, of our coasts and waters and wider environment. I'm grateful to the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, who respond to water incidents as part of their duties, who provided some statistics which reveal that they attended 79 incidents on the Clyde last year, which is an increase of 13 on the previous year. And if they have a, a three to one rescue. A uh, 3 to 1 ratio of rescues to fatalities, which is heartening, but there have been a few incidents in Glasgow recently which do give me pause for thought as I cross the river in the course of my day and I can see uh, for myself the tributes to loved ones who have been lost. We are very fortunate in Glasgow not only to have the Water Safety Working Group, but to have a dedicated organisation watching over the safety of people using our waterways in the Glasgow Humane Society. The Society was founded in 1790 by members of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, who employed an officer to carry out the practical work of drowning prevention, rescue and re the recovery of bodies from the river. Since then, they have sought to pursue water safety issues both in Glasgow and in the wider world under the stewardship of the great George Parsonage. The Clyde runs in his blood, Mr Speaker, having taken on the vocation um, in the Humane Society from his father, Benjamin Parsonage, and his own family are very much involved um, with the organisation in a more voluntary capacity. Would you not give way? I will do. Uh, you, 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 most generous in giving way. I was just sitting here, Mr Speaker, Speaker uh, thinking of, of, of what the number he is referring to. He referred to, to rivers, to seas, to beaches, uh, to lakes. Um, and, and my constituency, we, and probably in a lot of other constituencies, I, I suspect there are lots of quarries. And unfortunately, over the years, Mr. Speaker, we have lost some people who have drowned in, in the quarries across my constituency of Strangford. Ever mindful that quarries, with their water, with their unknown whatever is under the water, also with the, the chill of the water, the depth of the water, uh, does she agree as well when it comes to looking at waters, waterways, whether it be rivers, beaches, tides, lakes, whatever, quarries also have to be in that uh, category? Yes, I, I would agree with him, and we need to think about all water courses because you don't need very much water to drown in, um, after all. So we must be mindful of all the different uh, risks out there. And the issue of removal of the, and damage of life belts is not a new issue by any manner or means. And jo as George told me himself yesterday, the society has a poster dating from 1860, warning of the dangers of damaging life-saving equipment. And today, the society officer William Graham, along with uh, the many volunteers <coughs> that they have, collects life belts from the river and restores them to their rightful position. And George tells me that this is a daily job, with anything from a few life belts up to 30 having to be recovered from the river. The system of reporting which we have in place in Glasgow, instigated by the Glasgow Humane Society, is one where life belts and ropes are placed on neon yellow poles along the banks of the city waterways. And this makes it very clear where the life belts are located and, of course, when they are missing. And a note uh, coming in today that the ones placed along the terms are lost, a lot less clear being placed inside red boxes, so you can't automatically tell if indeed there's a life belt in there when you need, when you need it. Um, and it could take you longer to reach it, which is time that cannot be spared when somebody is in the water. And the neon poles I mentioned, along with other vital resources such as rescue ladders, are all GPS tagged and display a code such as UN25. Um, in a system which is understood by the local emergency services. And this helps people describe their location accurately in the event of an emergency and also allows people to easily report missing life belts to have them recovered. And I would commend the system to other members who have water courses in their constituencies because it is incredibly useful to be able to pinpoint exactly where an incident has happened so that the emergency services can respond. I'd also like to pay particular tribute um, to campaigners in Glasgow, Margaret and Duncan Spears, constituents of the Honourable Member for Glasgow North East, who is here today, who lost their son in an accidental drowning in the Clyde in 2016. And they are passionate in the face of such adversity to ensure that all is done to prevent anybody going through the same pain. And their son slipped and fell into the water. The police threw life belts into the water, but they couldn't reach him. And he died in less than 10 minutes. The whole event was captured in CCTV, and I can't imagine how awful that must have been for Christopher's father, Duncan, <coughs> watching that back, knowing that his son could have been so close to being saved. And the Spears have been tireless campaigners in the issue of water safety ever since, and they've succeeded in getting Glasgow City Council to install ropes for life belts um, along the banks of the Clyde. And I'm sure all honourable members would commend the Spears on their campaign, um, and that they very much hope that nobody has to experience what their family has gone through. 
They have taken the issue also to the Scottish Parliament to ask for improvements, to add ropes to life belts uh, to make that more commonplace, as well as providing life ropes and throw bags. And they have sought more recently for the use of specifically marked ropes, so that should they be removed, they can be easily identified if they are found in somebody's possession, therefore sort of tracing that crime of removing them back to somebody. Because this is, Mr Speaker, part of the point. At the moment, if someone removes life-saving equipment and carelessly, recklessly throws that into the river, it's very hard to pursue them and to identify the perpetrators and to get some kind of resolution to that, particularly when waterways can be um, quite rural, quite isolated uh, as well. You cannot put CCTV on every single life belt post uh, within the city of Glasgow. So it's much that we need to do to uh, deter people from doing this in the first place. And there doesn't seem to be any specific offence regarding tampering with life-saving equipment, and any fines would be associated more with vandalism or with theft. And there's a possibility of being charged with culpable and reckless behaviour, but this all feels, Mr Speaker, far too discretionary. And I'll give way to the Honourable Member for Glasgow. I thank, I thank the Honourable Member for Glasgow Central for bringing this debate to the House and she's making an excellent speech and I share her sentiments about the Spears family. I've had the honour of meeting them and I'm, I'm touched by their commitment to assuring a legacy of safety for the, the River Clyde, um, in particular the issue about safety of the life belt equipment and it's beggar's belief that someone would damage it or vandalise it in the way that it has been done. Um, and also, of course, there's other campaigners such as Steph Shaw and the Think Again campaign um, around emergency lifeline telephones. So it's a great effort by people in, the river, in Glasgow to try and solve some of the problems, and particularly in light of the death of John Connolly, the, the Fourth and Clyde Canal extends to the canal as well. But the uh, Honourable Member for Glasgow Central agree that we need to have much more effort around fundraising for equipment in the river as well, perhaps using charitable efforts to fundraise. I note that Glasgow City Council have purchased 21 um, ropes to fit to life belts in the Clyde this year, but perhaps we could have more capacity if some of the charity efforts of these groups were harnessed and we could further improve the capacity. I agree there is always something to be, to be said for charity fundraising and for um, a resource uh, of that kind being raised, but I think as honourable members raised earlier on, um, we cannot rely on that charity fundraising. I think that there needs to be more thought given to how you make this um, a lot more consistent, a lot more um, part of mainstream funding also, because it is life-saving equipment and it should not rely just upon charity alone. Um, as I was saying, there is not really um, an appropriate offence to cover such, um, such crimes as, as, as I would call them to be crimes of tampering with life saving equipment. And at the moment, there, there are different things that local authorities can do. And there was a recent incident in the Salford Keys which prompted the authorities there to use a public spaces protection order, which is under the law in England, to prevent people interfering with safety equipment. But this only occurs a £90 fine, £60 if paid in 10 days. Apparently, this could end up in court if those fines are not paid, but it still seems to me not to get the balance quite right, given the gravity of um, what people are doing here, because after all, this is life-saving equipment. And the cost to Salford Council in replacing the equipment and making the system more secure, as was reported in the Manchester Evening News, to be £34,000, money that should not have to be spent if people didn't engage in such mindless behaviour. So I turn, Mr Speaker, to my asks of the Minister. I seek to find out if more can be done to catalogue, first of all, the availability of water safety equipment to ensure that as many water courses as possible can have the reassurance of access to life-saving equipment. The UK Government um, could also carry out assessments to understand the extent to which damage is being caused and any hotspots where, um, where this is happening. And I've noted in my research and in speaking to people such as John... <laughs> Seven o'clock motion, whip to move. I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn. Alison Thewlis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I be fright there? <laughs> as, I've, as I've noted uh, in my research, I'm speaking to people, to campaigners uh, with expertise such as George Parsons, that this is sadly all too common in many communities. And I would consider the, I'd like to ask the Minister to consider a wider campaign year round rather than perhaps just in Drowning Prevention Week that could be carried out um, by the UK Government and to perhaps look to the Scottish Government, which, uh, where we have a, uh, a drowning prevention strategy uh, which is funded and is working hard to deliver education and other, other uh, public goods. I'm struck also, as um, the Honourable Member for Strangford hinted at earlier, that the, there's a lack of penalty uh, for the undoubted public harm of tampering, tampering with life-saving equipment. And I've, I've come to the belief that there ought to be um, a specific aggravated offence related to tampering with life-saving equipment. 
I understand uh, that there has been a private member's bill proposed in Ireland uh, by Fianna Foyle Senator Keith Swanick making it an offence to steal or damage life saving equipment such as defibrillators and life buoys. And I don't want to be to stray too far from water safety, Mr Speaker, but I am aware of many campaigns which have fundraised to install defibrillators and it is beyond belief that somebody would go out to deliberately damage one and I would argue that they also would require protection. The penalties Senator Swanick proposed are fines of up to €50,000 and a jail term of up to five years, which is quite different to that, that £90 fine um, in England. And I would ask the Minister to consider whether some similar measure might be brought here. I don't know, Mr Speaker, whether we will get new private members' bills or indeed if this session of Parliament will ever actually come to an end. <laughs> so it would be useful uh, in the meantime if the Minister would consider any other mechanisms which might be used in the meantime to protect this vital resource. Uh, and if there's anywhere within legislation that this might um, be usefully placed. Duncan Spears has said to me, the reason we want the law changed is to ensure the saf that safety equipment is not tampered with. Mm -hmm. Anyone tampering with this should be, just char should be charged with putting a life at risk and not just vandalism. Our campaign is of accident prevention measures and anyone that goes into the Clyde by accident or a suicide attempt should have the very best chance of getting out of the water. I wholeheartedly agree. Mm -hmm. The Glasgow campaign says taking a life belt is taking a, a life. And I would ask the Minister to give her support to that campaign and to do all in her power to ensure that life saving equipment is always there for those who need it in their moment in greatest need. Thank you. Thank you. I call the Minister.